My name is Jodie Bunting and welcome to the day in the life of me in Gran Canaria. Good morning, it's 6.30 and we have just woke up this morning. And the first thing to do is have a drink of water. Right, the next thing we do is grab the laptop. Um, what we're gonna do is we are going to make today's wellness challenge, which is basically just an online challenge. And we're in an Airbnb where I'm staying here in Gran Canary for a month. So it's very basic, but it's fine. Everything I need. So today is the 11th and we are gonna make today's challenge. Right, so we've now posted our challenge on all our social media challenge channels uh, and now it's check-in Tuesday, it's Tuesday, it's trying to check in with all my slimmers with the most important document I have and that's everyone's way. Finally, just checking the weather and you can see it's going to be another sunny day here in Gran Canaria and not too windy either. Right, let's just check outside. Yep, another sunny day. Now just watching a little bit of Netflix, I've been watching this series, Stay Close, that everybody seems to be watching. Right, so we're off now to get a shower. We've got our chemical free toothpaste and our toothbrush. As I said, this is a, a little shared apartment. Just putting the, the light on. So here's the kitchen area, fridge, etc. The other rooms there. And here's the bathroom. Well, this morning, of course, we're gonna have a little shower before we hit the beach. Right, we are now showered and ready to get changed. And I need to make that bed. Right, now, before we go out, I'm just gonna have my protein shake. And I'll also tell you a little bit about nutrition and what I've been doing over here in Gran Canaria. Why I make my shake and swing it down as well. Um, so over the last couple of weeks, and to be honest, the whole idea of coming out here to Gran Canaria was to A, have a great time over Christmas and New Year with my friend Claire, but also to give myself a good kickstart. And I've been trialing something called the Cambridge Diet. So it's a really old diet. This book is from like the 80s or something like that. Uh, and it's just a very low calorie diet. This edition, which is one of the first edition, is 330 calories a day. Now I did this for a week uh, before Christmas. It was okay. I've uh, been doing it afterwards, increasing the calories a little bit as well. I'll be making a separate video about that, uh, telling you about the results. Uh, but I'm just going to show you basically what I've been living off the last couple of weeks. Uh, for my new slimmers, by the way, I'm not expecting to do this. I'm just showing you what I've been trialing. So I love sparkling water, so I've always got loads of sparkling water in. Uh, still water, which is this big eight gallon uh, litre thing. Um, this is my favourite protein shake. It's the keto one. Uh, this is the mocha variety, but they also do chocolate and vanilla. And it just tastes luxurious and thick. Now it says to put in 200 ml of water, but I normally put in about 400 ml of water. Because to be honest, when you're not having many calories and you want to get lots of water in, it's just nicer that way. Always lick the lid so it doesn't go down my white t-shirt. I've learned that. Uh, and I love, especially keto shakes, because they've got the, the fat in, the coconut oil, it just tastes like luxurious and nice. Now these have got artificial sweetener in, so for those of you trying to take away your artificial sweeteners, you do need to be careful. Uh, every day, I'm having shakes, by the way, because it's a good way to get protein and fat in, but also a great way to get all your nutrients in you, micronutrients. And they're not ideal, not out of food, uh, but when you're on a low calorie diet, you do need some assistance. Um, I also have a snack of some nuts every single day to get my essential fats in. 
Um, and then also in the evening when it's been a bit cooler. I know it's not cool for you guys in the UK, but it's cool when it's when you've been in the sun all day. Uh, I got these from my local little down here, and that's just some berry tea and some lemon and ginger. So herbal teas are fantastic, and those are two of my favourite. And that's basically, as I said, what I've been living off. I had some apples, some salad as well. Like I said, I always try and have something, a portion of fresh fruit or vegetables every single day. Right, I'm gonna finish this. And we're gonna to go to the beach, let's go. So before we go out, I'll just show you what I keep in my backpack. First of all, for security reasons, I'll do carry on with my laptop, because it's basically my life, so we don't want that nick from this flat. I carry around my spare phone, of course a towel for the beach, a handful of nuts, uh, a litre of water, a face mask, which is really important in Spain, I'll tell you why that in a minute, my sunglasses and my hat. And for those of you wondering why I'm wearing a hat, quite lately. It's not to look cool, it's actually because I haven't cut my hair in quite a few weeks, so I'm just trying to look not as hairy. So before we leave the house, we need to start Strava. Starting. And get some music on. thing about this flat is it's like two flats in one so this is the main flat door but then it's divided into two and there's like four rooms so this door doesn't actually close it's weird leaving your front door open right let's go oh yeah look at that 22 degrees so we've got to go up and over the main road over this bridge and just to explain the laws in Spain about face masks, they are in tier number three, which means severe. Uh, and you are meant to wear face masks, even in the street, anywhere in the public. And you see all the local Spanish people wearing them. However, when you're in the tourist area, to be honest, none of the tourists are wearing them, thankfully. And Jetsu's advice is, the authorities can find you, so just make sure you've got your uh, mask handy in case you see any police. We walk through this little shopping centre full of like British bars, Dutch bars, etc. Now the fastest way to the beach is 20 minutes that way, but because we want to get our 10,000 steps, we're going to go for a little walk. Now on the way to the beach, I'm just going to stop off and show you one of my favourite viewpoints on the way. So this is the Mas Palomas lookout here in Playa de Inglug. You see there's a golf course down the bottom there, but you can also see the beach, the dunes, and then Maspalomas town itself, which is over there. You can also see the mountains if we get a bit closer. You can see a little bit of the mountains up there. It's a shame that the sun's just gone behind that cloud. Here's a view of the mountains that I wanted to show you before. There they are. Right, now we walk down to the Rui Palace Hotel. And the reason it's so special, and I always include it in my walks, because it's got a public right of way through the middle of the hotel. And there's something very special on the other side. So here it is, at the other side of this hotel there is this amazing lookout over the Maspaloma sand dunes. It's also the secret path to the Gay Beach, but to be honest with you, the Gay Beach is not my favourite beach here because it's just full of old naked guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favourite beach is where we're going to go to, uh, but as well as the, the start of the dunes, there's also a path that goes over to Maspalomas town if you want a nice long walk through the sand dunes. Now as you can see by all the footprints in the sand, a lot of people do go onto the sand dunes to take a photo. I have done this, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, but I must say, it was like the hardest workout ever trying to get up onto that sand dune. It was like that stepper machine at the gym. So, so difficult. So well done these people that are having pictures. I feel your pain getting up there. And we are going to stop here for a quick water break. The 
going along that path leads to this upper path which goes straight into the town with the most amazing views. For those of you looking for hotel recommendations, this one is literally on the beat. It's so great with any mobility issues, if you can't get around much, this one's called Santa Monica. It's luxurious. Hi, so here we are. I'm Mr. Cat. Um, so here we are on to the main centre where the main beach is, the main shopping, restaurants and everything is. So we're going to go down here and leave this beautiful site. So it's 10.47, it's 21 degrees. I do normally come down to the beach a little bit later, but it's nearly time to go home in a few days. So it's time to start panic tanning quick. Now this is like the main shopping bit down near the beach. Plus McDonald's. Try not to come here too often because the smell of all the lovely foods and lots of unhealthy options are down here. But I wanted to show you one thing and that is this place called the Tipsy Hammer. It is the best cocktail bar down here on the beach. In fact, the whole of Gran Canaria probably. They have live music by an English girl. And look, it's so close to the beach, which is right here. So this is normally where I spend my days on the beach, right next to the Tipsy Hammock. We're going to get some grounding done now we're on the beach. If you don't know what grounding is, I've talked about it a lot. Google it. One thing I have noticed since being here is the smell of urine. Since Covid they've closed all the toilets and you do see a lot of people weeing in these bushes. So before you pick a spot, sniff it out. Later on I'm going to show you a really nice bit of the beach along the coast, but for now we're just going to relax here and hit the rays. This is a nice spot. So time to hydrate, we'll get that water in. So after walking, we definitely need to get that hydration in, so drink as much as you can before, during and after exercise. Folks, some of my secrets to tanning, by the way, is to do little and often, use no sun cream, but obviously when you do burn or feel like you're burning or getting too warm, get out of the sun. It's all about as I said earlier, I do normally come down here later in the day because it does get so hot. So coming down at about 1 or 2 o'clock and then spending the sunset down here is nice. Then you get to walk home in the cool. Time for a little snack. I've got a handful of nuts in this bag. And of course, some more water. Now a couple of hours on the beach done, putting my towel away and look how I've rolled it. I just can't get out of autopilot from work. When I see a towel, it has to be rolled perfectly. I just wanted to show you the sea, the waves, but also a little bit of salt therapy. Let's get our feet in that water. This is the main square down here at the beach and you'll find here everything you need and also everything you don't need. 
This is the famous Maspaloma sign. And from here, we can take the easy way back home, which is slowly up a nice windy hill, or there's some hardcore stairs to go up. Now, I know you want me to do the hardcore stairs, but before that, let's have a quick picture with the sign. So this is what you call a physical challenge. Right, we're just doing the last, the last few now, and then I'll show you the amazing view. It is worth it getting up here. Look at that view. So that's the beach where we've just come from. And that's where we're going. I'm going to show you the other great beach. But first I'm going to sit down and have a drink. Another hotel recommendation. This one's called the Atlantic Beach Club. Look at that pool. Now we're running out of time, so I'm just going to show you by far the beach I wanted to show you. It's the one towards San Austin, and it is right over there, and it's really flat and quiet and nice. It's a lovely walk along the coast as well. So if you want somewhere a little bit quieter, that's the place to go. Such amazing views from up here, and this is one of the main reasons I came here for a month, because I knew I could walk and enjoy the views. And I'll just turn around, we're coming back the other way because I've just remembered I can eat it and I need to go and get some salad and we're going to go somewhere I haven't tried since I've been here which I really wanted to um, but I want to take you, so let's go and check out the beach, on this side look it looks so small and so short that beach so when you walk it, it's not so short and it's not, <laughs> it's huge Now on our walk past the Casbah, rock the Casbah and all that uh, we are going past one of these public places of worship, the details on TripAdvisor. And now I haven't had a speaker yet, why am I? I want to tell you a little story about when I was here last time. One of these streets where all the cars were parked. I was walking down there with my friends and I was like, oh, what's this girl doing in a bikini top at night? Obviously, I didn't realise she was a prostitute. So there is a couple of prostitute streets out here. It made me smile. So here we are. We're going to España. And I've got my face mask ready. Let's go. Right, so we went for the chicken Caesar salad and wow, it looks amazing, look at that. I can't wait to dig in, let's go. Of course we've got a bit of sparkling water with it, nice. That salad was just over 200 calories. I track everything on my fitness pal and it cost me six euros for that and the water. Right, all finished and that was delicious. Now one thing you can see from here is the Yumbo Centre, which if you don't know is basically the gay community centre of the whole of Europe. It's actually just a shopping centre over here. It's got everything you need if you are gay and if you love the gays as well. So that is the Yumbo Centre. We won't be going in today. I've only really been going actually with my friends when they've been here. But funnily enough, when I've had gay dates, I've not taken that. It seems a little bit cliche to go there. I've been going to other places. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't been to Yumbo and you like gay people or you are gay, then go. <laughs> I'm guessing you wouldn't be watching this if you didn't I gave you. Subway is next to uh, the Red Cow, one of the famous British pubs out here. As I said, Jumbo is that way, but we're going back to my flat, which is straight on. We're walking back to that little shopping centre. I have to see this sign every day, 4.50 for a full fry up, but no. So here we are, crossing the bridge, back to home. It's now time to sink our Fitbit and see our Strava route. We did well over our 10,000 steps today and on Strava it says 6k but I think we did about 8k because this damn map doesn't record properly. I went all the way down there. Right we do have an evening of coaching tonight so before we get started on that I'm just popping in for a quick shower. 
sweating, sweating. Right, so finished my shower and we are all set up ready for an evening of coaching. We've got our selfie light plugged in, we've got our laptop, we've got our water. We are ready to go. Here we go, clients. Right, so we've just finished my first one, which was a live one with Julie, and this is my schedule. We're gonna be going on tonight till quarter past nine. Right, so we've just finished online coaching. I'm not gonna show you anyone's weight, but I do wanna show you how much they've lost between them. This week, they've lost 46 point four pounds just unbelievable amazing guys well done and that is me done for the day let me just check the time it's now 20 past nine i'm physically and mentally exhausted so i'm gonna get in that bed and I'm asleep thank you for joining me that was my day in the life of me in grand canaria bye Please remember to like, give me a comment, share with your friends and of course subscribe to my channel. Thank you.